I'm going to be participating in a few rally events with the Sports Car Club of America. And to do so, I needed to get myself a helmet. So today I'm going to talk about the helmet that I chose, how to size it up for your head if you want to get one, and how it fits when wearing it inside a car. So this video is being recorded in 2021. And I tell you the year because we're going to talk about Snell. Snell is the organization or governing body, whatever you want to call it, that certifies helmet safety standards. Now, for the SCCA, you have to have the current Snell rating in your helmet or the last two, at least if you're talking about rally cross. And uh, that's why this helmet is Snell 2020 certified. So, Snell updates the ratings every five years. So, for your helmet for rally cross with the SCCA, as of 2021, you could either use Snell 2020. 2015 or 2010. Anything below 2010, meaning the year, will not be accepted. And that's just a safety thing. So this one, Snell 2020. Now in order to get the correct size helmet, you'll need to measure your head. And to do that, we're going to be measuring from the middle of our forehead to around the back of our head. And we're just going to use this cloth tape measure to do so. The head measures around 24 inches when you measure it like this. Which, according to Conker's uh, head sizing chart, puts me at the extra large helmet size. So that's what I got. So with this being a full face helmet, if you have glasses like I do, you'll need to take them off before you fit your helmet over. But it's actually pretty easy to get your glasses back on once the helmet's on. So. I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate that. All right, and then we can slide our frames in. Now it's going to take a few tries to get the, uh, the sides of your glasses back over your ears, but Eh, it's just a little bit of practice that you'll need to do. Now, when it comes to helmets, you should realistically try and go with whatever size is going to fit as snugly as you can stand because in the event of an accident, you don't want your head bobbling around in the helmet. The helmet's supposed to protect your head from that sort of thing. So, you'll notice that uh, I don't have the visor down. If you put the visor down, it does lock into place. If you want to unlock it, there's these little tabs on the side. You pull up, and there you go. Now for the chin strap, this is actually more of a throat strap. So, see if I can get this on camera. So you got your two D-rings. You slide it through both D-rings. And then you slide it through one of the D-rings. And there you go. It's nice and tight. So you notice it goes and attaches a little bit closer to the throat. And in fact, that is by design. It might take a little time to get used to, but that's just how this helmet is. So now that we've got our helmet affixed and comfy and it does fit quite snugly. All right, so I am approximately five foot nine, five foot ten around there in height. And I am currently sitting with my chair as far down as it will go. And in my case, that's particularly necessary. The roof of my vehicle is not all that much higher than my head. If you look right there. So now that we've got a gauge for how much room I have without the helmet, let's talk about how much room I do have when wearing the helmet. All right, we got the helmet on, we're in the car. Now, I'm gonna do this without the visor closed because I'm in a fully encapsulated vehicle. The cockpit is, uh, it's not an open, open vehicle, right? So let's talk about that space again. Not a whole lot. So, oh, the helmet is thick, but I can move around. Mm. Yep, 
<laughs> it's a close, it's a close fit. I almost don't fit in here with this helmet. So that's something to be mindful about when getting a helmet. Now, one thing about this helmet is the visor doesn't really have any real means of staying up. It really does want to just come down. And uh, if you don't want to deal with that, I'm pretty sure these can allow you to remove the visor itself. So if you're in a completely encapsulated cockpit like I am, uh, I'm, it should be fine. You know, in Rallycross, uh, if you have a completely enclosed cockpit like this, you don't even need a full face helmet. You can actually use just a, um, well, a non full face. So, you know, we cut off right here and you wouldn't have the, the mouth guards and such. But I, I got this because I might be doing some other racing as well that might require a full face helmet. Still, get the helmet that's applicable to you and go with that. Now let's talk about that visor situation because looking at the little clips that actually lock this visor up and down, you see in the downward position it has this little tab here that looks like it's locking in, but if we look at the bottom, it really does seem like something's missing there, isn't it? Like as if the little rubber piece broke off, so if we try and open our visor, This little tab here has nothing to really press against. So I'm wondering if that's a defect of my helmet. It stays shut. It's got a good tactile shut. But, uh, hmm. Something to wonder about, huh? So let's talk about comfortability, usability due to its comfort, etc. So everything fits around the head very snugly. That's obviously on purpose. You want it to do that. The helmet itself is comfortable enough. It is a little heavy given that it's fiberglass and not something like carbon fiber. The lenses don't appear, or the visor, doesn't appear to fog up very easily, which is nice. Um, especially when you're wearing glasses, you know, the last thing you want is fog building up on the visor. There's venting along the mask and I believe that probably helps. It goes a long way towards this visor not fogging up. But um, it's definitely a livable helmet. A little big physically, but definitely livable. So an open face helmet is probably going to be a bit smaller. And an in a, in a enclosed helmet like this probably needs more padding because it's assumed that you're probably going to be in a vehicle that doesn't have an enclosed cockpit. But for a general all-around helmet, at the price range it's at, it's about $200. It's a great entry-level helmet.